President Putin has ordered Russia's strategic nuclear forces to be placed on high alert. He says Western leaders have made aggressive statements about Russia. And he also says that uh, international sanctions are illegitimate. Boris Johnson has described the move as a distraction from the reality of what's going on here in Ukraine, while the U.S. denounced it as completely unacceptable. Here's our Moscow correspondent, Steve Rosenberg. From the Kremlin, a pointed message to the West. Don't push Russia. President Putin summoned his military chiefs and gave them an order. Top officials of leading NATO countries are making aggressive statements about our country. Therefore, I'm ordering the Minister of Defence and the Chief of the General Staff to put the strategic nuclear forces on special alert. Would Putin really use them? He practised a week ago, overseeing exercises of Russia's strategic deterrence forces. Typically unsubtle hints to America and NATO not to stand in his way over Ukraine. Today's special alert, more presidential muscle flexing. Across from the Kremlin, Muscovites gathered on a bridge to remember Boris Nemtsov, the Putin critic gunned down right here seven years ago. For Vladimir Karamurza, this was a day for remembering a friend and for condemning the war. This is not Russia's war. This is not a war by the Russian people and the Ukrainian people. This is yet another military adventure, military crime by uh, an unelected, unaccountable, authoritarian and frankly increasingly deranged dictator in the Kremlin by the name of Vladimir Putin. You won't hear anything like that on Russian state TV. It's been claiming that Russian troops are liberating eastern Ukraine and that Moscow is using force in the interests of peace. In Russia, television remains the key tool for shaping public opinion. So if you control TV, as the Kremlin does, you control the messaging. But not 100%, because today many Russians do get their news and information online. And there, they see a very different picture. So if you use the words attack, invasion or war... We can say only special operation. Yevgenia Albats edits an online magazine. Like other independent Russian media, the authorities have banned it from calling this a war. What is the Kremlin trying to do to the truth now in Russia? What they always do. Listen, you know, they always, uh, you know, turn truth into lies. They lie. They just lie. Censorship at home. War abroad. Yes, war in Ukraine and now Russia's nuclear forces on special alert. Tonight, Russian state TV announced our submarines alone are capable of launching more than 500 nuclear warheads guaranteed to destroy America and all of NATO. So what is this? Brinkmanship? Something more? Or something less? Empty threats. But I think after the dramatic events we've seen in recent days, it would be unwise to dismiss these signals from the Kremlin. But of course, for the international community, that leaves a very difficult question, how to react to them. OK, we'll uh, leave it there. Thank you, Steve Rosenberg in Moscow. Well, our North America editor, Sarah Smith, is in Washington for us. Uh, Sarah, what's been the response to the suggestion that President Putin is putting his nuclear arsenal on standby? Well, of course, people here are very worried about it, both those at this pro-Ukrainian demonstration outside the White House and inside the White House. They're describing this as unprovoked escalation that is positively dangerous. I have to say this announcement came as a complete shock to the United States where uh, the uh, administration here learned about it only as Putin made that announcement publicly. And what senior officials in the Pentagon are warning is that by invoking the use of potentially using nuclear weapons, Putin is raising the chances of a miscalculation that could make the situation much more dangerous. 
They're also really quite concerned about the tactics they're seeing already being deployed in, on the ground in Ukraine. They believe that Russia will attempt to isolate and lay siege to the capital, Kiev, and that will, of course, vastly increase the risks of civilian deaths and casualties. One other thing, the UN is going to hold an emergency special session tomorrow to vote on a resolution condemning Russia. And to give you an idea of the significance of that, they've had only 10 similar sessions since 1950. Okay, Sarah, thank you for that. Sarah Smith there, live in Washington.